And of course, you may be thinking that if your thoughts are not influencing you, or that you are un unattached to thoughts, you are a better person. Mm, that's why you could well be a better person, but you're still a thought self. That's the point I'm trying to bring out. <laughs> my dream tonight. Very interestingly, I heard a voice. Yes, a voice from a friend, a friend that I know. And he said, I'm here. He said, I'm here. And, uh, and I'd like to see you or something like that. Then, but immediately when I heard that voice, I saw a picture, I saw a, a scene. And in that scene, it apparently appears that I moved my hand to open the window. I was in the room and I opened the window and I saw the window. It was beautiful, serene. Because I'm looking at the sky. But in the dream, when I moved my hand to open the window, I felt that it was my friend who did it, not me. But I'm the first person opening the window. It's so interesting about the whole thing is that, <laughs> is that even the very person that I think I am, the David Chiu of the space time. The very person that I identify with is actually a friend of mine. It's not exactly me. Everybody is, of course, the other side of me, but it's a kind of David Chiu 2, 3, 4, 5. But it's not exactly me. But interestingly, I can take their position from their perspective and I can open the window for them. That's the interesting part. Secondly, the inter when my friend or myself in the first person opens the window, it looks empty, but it's bluish in color. It's the sky. So although my friend or myself opened the window of the room, I'm still in a bigger room. Although I'm outside of the smaller room, but I'm still in space-time. I'm still looking at the sky. And although it's empty, I'm still inside space-time. That's the important point that I notice about the dream. But the most important point of all is the voice. When I heard the voice say, I am here, that's nearer to me than even the scene that I was in. What I'm trying to say is that when I open the window, that eye which opened the window is not as near as the voice that speaks to me. The voice which says, I am here. And although I felt that this voice is from a friend, but the voice of that friend or whoever that voice is, is much nearer to me than the picture or the scene that I saw in the dream. So what does that mean? What the dream is telling me is that it is more important to hear the voice of your friend or even your own voice more important than to study the content of your thoughts. That's right. The content of your thought is stuck in space-time. But the voice, although it's the voice of a friend, but that voice, if you can enter that voice, it is far nearer to me than any phenomena that I'm looking at in this world. And mind you, let me emphasize, the content of the voice is also not important. It's the voice itself. It's the breathing of that voice. It's the breath that is more important than any 
phenomena in this world if you are interested to arrive at I am. And the dream is also telling me it is not important to open the window of your room because many of my friends are saying if you open the window of your room at least you can breathe fresh air at least you can see the empty sky you escape from your own thoughts you are not influenced you get unattached to your thoughts but I always tell them it doesn't make a difference because you are still in that room of space-time I've always emphasized in my video that you must observe your thoughts to the extent that your thoughts become breath. It becomes a voice. And then it becomes breath. And this is the secret of I am. You see, everything that you're seeing in this world, even your thoughts that you generate, they're actually voices. They're not contents of phenomenal thoughts. They're actually voices. And you have to hear the voice of those thoughts. You have to turn them into breath. That's how you can hear the voice of the thoughts. And this is the secret of the universe. If you are interested to know I am, if you're not, it's okay. Just get stuck in the room and open your window to get fresh air. And that's what everybody is doing. They're just stuck in their room in space-time and if they need some peace and relaxation, what did they do? They get out of their toes and they look at the sky. They say it's empty out there, so they, they feel comfortable. But that's not I am. That's the point I'm trying to drive at. And some of you can even say to me, I'm breathing every day. Am I not breathing the breath of God? You're not. That's what the dream is telling me. You see, when I'm in the room, which is a scenery, right, and when I open the window to get fresh air, the air that is coming to me through the window is not the true breath, because it's still a space-time breath. It's still part of the phenomena of dreams in your brain. You're not in reality whatsoever. You can pretend that you know breath. You can think that you have opened the sky to get empty space, but you're not at the level of true breath. You're just only in space-time, breathing space-time air. That's all. So, it's a very important practice on your part. A very, very important message. That is why, if I were to have done it all by myself in search for my enlightenment, so to speak, if I have done it all by myself, I would have never thought that breath is the answer. Because I would have gone to Buddhism. I'm not saying nothing against the Buddhism. I'm just saying to clarify what Buddha actually say. Yeah, Because Buddha actually knows the truth. Buddha says that you travel the path, that's not enough. You must be the path yourself. I am the path. The path is me. Only then, then, can you be enlightened as Buddha. So I'm not against Buddha at all. I'm trying to say that if I had gone on my own journey, I would have been a Buddhist and, <laughs> and, and have learned many many of the texts of Sutra and I would have understood that uh, that it is important to have a fresher air. This would be important for me not to be influenced by my thoughts. I would have understood that. But that would not be the solution. The, the angel told me that I have to enter prayer. That's what he said to me. It is not the same as having thoughts and thinking that you are breathing. Gosh. And, you know, in the Bible, in the Old Testament, King Solomon, what did he say? He said this. He said, vanities of vanities, all is vanity. I'm sure you've heard that if you are Christian. But that's not correctly translated. Okay. Let me translate to you in Hebrew. 
What it means is that breath of bread, all is bread. That's what Solomon is saying. And that's very true. All the thoughts that you're having right now, all the phenomena that you are visualizing right now, is actually a voice, a voice of God. In truth, it's actually the breath of God. But you are not aware of it. You're just opening your window and looking up at the sky. You're not breathing the breath of God. I invite you to the reality of I am. To conclude this video, I want to emphasize this. That, you see, we are identified to the name for me, to David Chu. And for most of us, we are never able to get out of that name. We thought that David Chu, which is my name, is the name of the identity. That, that is true. It is the identity of space-time, but it's not I am. And so attached are we to the identity that we thought that just by removing the thoughts, we can get into a better place. Cannot. Because it's the identity that you must get out. So that's why I call self-negation. You have to die to that identity of space-time. But yet must be aware <laughs> that there is another deeper place beneath that identity where you can drop in. A place you can still live right now. If you are fully aware that the identity of space-time, David Chi, for example, is not the true identity. The true identity is I am. And the true identity is not exactly an identity. The true identity is simply I. That's right. Descriptionless. Unit space. And has no place in this universe that you see. I just want to emphasize the last point. The self that you know is a thought self, meaning it's a thought, meaning that it's a self created by your own thoughts. So, so you can't actually stop the thoughts. You cannot. You cannot say, I'm going to an empty thought. You cannot do that. You know why? Because the thought itself is yourself in this world. So if you're saying that you can empty your thought, you're not doing anything. You're just simply still emptying yourself. Yourself which is the thought self. You're not doing anything at all. As if you are still in space-time thought, the identity you lived is space-time identity. So no matter what you try to break out of that space-time thought, you can't until you convert that thought to breath. In the last part of this video, I was emphasizing that to get out of your thoughts or to remove your thoughts from your mind or to be unattached to your thoughts is not exactly negating the thought self. You will still be in the thought self even though you have remove the influence of thoughts in your life. That's what I was trying to point out. Even if you open the window of the room, you're still in the room. The thought self is still yourself. That's the difference. The true self, the true observer, is breath is not taught itself and that's the difficult part of it so one has therefore to turn the thoughts into breath in order to reach the place of I am and of course you may be thinking that if your thoughts are not influencing you or that you are un unattached to thoughts you are a better person that's fine, you could well be a better person, but you're still a taught self. That's the point I'm trying to bring out. And the point I have to emphasize is that not being attached to thoughts or not participating in thoughts at all 
would affect your life in this world a lot. In the sense that you will not be participating in the activities of the world anymore. Because the world is thoughts. And all the activities of the world is a thought activity. Whether you are moving your body, whether you are in your career, or whether you are holding money, they are all thoughts. Because that's what you're thinking whenever you're participating with it. Even the body, you're thinking of it. So it is a thought. So when a person says that he doesn't want to be influenced by thought, by that of a monk, he has to go out into the mountains and live all by himself. I have no intention to do that. That's the point I'm trying to say. Like Jesus, I would prefer to be in this world, but out of the world. I would prefer to participate in the activities of the world. And still be the breath. It may sound impossible to the gurus, but I find the correct approach. Is my opinion. For me, the thoughts are all the time in my mind, and I have no intention to remove them or to stop them. But my intention is only to observe these thoughts. That's right, to observe the thoughts until it turns back. That's the point. My intention is to be in this world, but yet to discover the voice of God everywhere in this world. My intention is not about thoughts, that they are evil, because thoughts cannot be evil, because we are created with thoughts, we are created with a brain. So thoughts cannot be evil. I'm part of the thoughts itself, the whole body is thought, but I can reach in that's the point I'm trying to stress. I can reach within, beneath all the thoughts and discover prayer. I find that is more authentic. I'm in the soul, but I'm still out of the world. I find that more authentic because, because that's what exactly I am. I'm a thought self. At the same time, the breath 